Hello friends, uh, as you were seeing me using a, a, a magnifying lens, okay, we are going to start our lectures on optical microscope, of course, which use some magnifying lens like this and uh, how they are arranged to get a magnified image in the eyepiece. Okay, so, to start, I uh, will uh, I'll introduce you to optical microscope first and uh, in that, we will look at some concepts like magnification okay, and what is useful magnification. See, we, we cannot keep on magnifying any image to any extent okay, and ultimately there has to be some useful magnification. So, we will try to understand that what do we mean by this concept of useful magnification and that is very intimately related to the resolution. Okay that whether you are able to resolve the uh, features which you are interested in or not. Okay. So, this useful magnification is related to resolution and then we will uh, see uh, uh, two other concepts which are related to microscope. These are depth of field and depth of focus. Okay. So, all these uh, terms we will see, we will try to analyze what do we mean by each of these term and how it is useful to get a good microstructure in a sample. To start with, uh, this is your high school physics, okay, there is a thin lens, thin, thin lens equation here. So, let me use, uh, uh, explain it with an schematic here, uh, what do we mean by V, U and F. Okay. So, suppose we have an optical axis of a thin lens, of course, I am exaggerating the convexity of this particular lens here okay, and these are the focal point of this particular lens okay. and let us say I, have, I am keeping an ob object here away from the focal length here f, this is my object okay. and suppose we there is a parallel ray which is coming and striking this particular uh, object. Okay. Then how the rays will propagate from here and interact with the lens. Okay. So, after interacting with the lens, it will go through the focal point here. Okay. Another ray which is going through the center of the lens, okay, there, there will not be any divergence. It will go straight like this okay. and you will see uh, inverted image forming at this particular location. Okay. And now, we can define all these values. Okay. So, the u is your distance from the lens of the object, okay. v is the distance of image from the object okay. and f is your focal length okay. and this is the thin lens equation. Uh, of course, you will uh, have to keep in mind the sign convention which we use here. Any any distance uh, we are measuring in the direction of the ray will be positive and anything which we are measuring uh, in the direction opposite to the rays here will be negative. Okay. So, for all your calculation, please keep the sign convention in mind. Okay. Your, uh, I can also define a magnification here, which is given by the distance of the image from the lens and the distance of the object from the lens. Okay. And of course, if you uh, replace V and U with F here, you will get the other two relations, uh, which is shown in the slide. This is how, uh, this is what is used in a compound microscope or a metallurgical microscope. Okay, so, let me tell you the whole illumination schematic of a compound microscope, which is sometime you can call as metallurgical microscope also. To distinguish a metallurgical microscope from a biological microscope, which you might have seen in your uh, school, okay, if you have done some biological experiments. Okay. In case of metallurgical microscope, the illumination is by reflection. Okay. 
So, the rays gets reflected from the object and then it again go uh, goes back to in the objective and then you form the image. Whereas, in case of biological samples, okay, the image transmit through the sample and then it goes to objective and you form the image. Okay. So, in case of metallurgical or microscope, the illumination is re by reflection and I will just show you what kind of uh, uh, schematic is there, the ray diagram for that. This is also called a compound microscope because more than one lens will be used to form the image. Okay. So, first I will draw the parts of the of a microscope. So, you have uh, a source, okay, a light source. I will write down that a light source, okay. Then you have apertures here, okay, and then you have a what we call as a condenser lens, okay. Condenser lens, okay. From there, uh, we will come to the other part of the microscope. Okay, there will be a half silver mirror here. Okay, which will uh, divert the rays coming from the condenser lens toward the objective lens. Okay, so there will be an objective lens here. This is the objective lens. Okay, and this is half silvered mirror. Okay. Of course, there will be some focal length for these this particular lens. Okay. Then after this mirror, again there will be uh, another lens here, which we will call as an eyepiece. This can be called as eyepiece or this can also be called as projector lens. Okay. The image can be projected uh, on a screen or you can take this image and uh, show it in the uh, on your uh, computer monitor. Okay. So, now let us see, I will start drawing the rays which are coming from the light source. Okay. So, it will be diverging from the light source. So, this condenser lens will be uh, this light source will be at the focus focal point of this particular condenser lens. So, after this it will go parallel okay, something like this okay. and then this will be uh, put on the objective lens okay. and from there whatever uh, object is placed here. Okay, suppose some object is placed here, these rays will fall on that. Okay. Uh, there will be some diversion towards the uh, object here. Okay. After falling on the object, okay, uh, my rays will now get reflected towards the objective back. So, it will go again towards the objective. Okay, from this and after going from here, it will be parallel to the optic axis here and this will be going through the focal point okay, and it will make another image here which will be uh, intermediary image, okay, uh, intermediate image will be there. Okay. And from here again, I will also have to draw a focal point for this particular lens. Okay. So, this ray will go like this, this one is going like this and after passing through the lens it will become parallel to the optic axis and this will go through the focal point to give you a magnified image here. Okay. So, this is the whole schematic for a, a compound microscope okay, which, uh, which is used in this kind of uh, geometry uh, reflected microscope uh, for a metallurgical application. Okay. Now, we want to understand as you can see here, if I keep on putting lenses here, 
okay for each lens there will be some magnification okay and i can keep on adding the magnification if i keep on adding the lenses here okay and that way i can go to any magnification i want okay but we cannot do that because with position of each my uh, lens okay the image deteriorates okay and that can be very nicely shown by this particular slide here okay where these three images are taken from an optical microscope and the same from the same material another three images were taken from a, another type of microscope which is called scanning electron microscope okay and you can see that up to 300x if you see both the images they have almost similar uh, features the sharpness of the image is same the clarity of the image is same okay but if you come to 1400x here okay now you can see that the features uh, which are shown in this optical micrograph okay are little bit blurred they are not very clear okay whereas if you see the scanning electron micrograph here the image same image is very sharp okay all the features are very sharp you can distinguish between the two different features okay or you can be you will be able to see this sharp boundary between these two features here where in this case it the boundary is not very sharp so you are not able to resolve it okay so in this compound microscope as you can see i have magnified this particular uh, image of this particular object here which is a intermediate image again i can put another lens here and i can uh, magnify the image further okay and i can keep on putting the lenses here and i can keep on magnifying the uh, image but there is a limit to that i cannot keep on doing that because if you keep on putting lenses here the resolution of the image will decrease with the magnification in case of optical microscope okay the reason and to understand this resolution that what do we mean by resolution okay i'll come to this next slide here the resolution is basically the closest spa spacing between two points which can you can clearly see through a microscope as separate entities you must be remembering when uh, you jo any, any friend who actually wears this kind of spectacles okay we usually joke we will take his uh, uh specs out and we will put two fingers and we will ask him kitne how many fingers are there okay and uh, you joke whether he will be able to say two or one or whatever okay so what we are trying to test for that particular uh, friend that whether he is able to resolve these two fingers or not without his uh, spectacles okay so what we do in this fun activity is we are defining resolution okay so that is what is here also that whether i am able to see uh, two entities which are there in the sample or features which are there in the sample whether i am able to see them as two different feature or two different entities or not okay so it is not uh, you can should not confuse it with the that it is the smallest point which can be seen with a microscope a smallest point can be even smaller than the resolution okay a smallest point you can see is much smaller than the resolution what we are trying to say is these two small points how closer they can be and we will still have will be able to say that they are two different features or two different entities okay they should not be seen as two, one one single un, unit or single entity okay to clarify this uh, idea more okay and why this resolution problem comes in microscope or any optical uh, uh, optical system okay this is the concept what is uh, what we know as airy rings okay so the airy rings means when a, a parallel beam of light when it passes through any uh, contraction or any uh, location where it, it it is kind of constricted it is allowed to go through a aperture okay then it it gets diffracted okay and during this diffraction as you can see in this particular slide you get one central spot here a bright spot 
then you get another ring here with uh, 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 another brightness then you get the third ring here and so on so so one single light beam okay is divided into one beam a uh, central spot then another ring and then another ring okay and the intensity is also plotted here okay so you can see the central spot is the most intense then there is a second ring okay intensity is much lower than the third ring and so on and between two maxima there is always going to be a minima here okay and this is what is shown here in the schematic a light beam going through uh, opening here and it gets diffracted okay so you have a central spot here and the two the ring which you get is because of this because this is a section you see it as a as a uh, two dimensional object but it will be actually will be a ring so when it goes through this opening it will become a cone a central beam and a cone one first cone second cone and so on and which you on the screen will see is a central spot first ring and second ring and so on okay so this parallel beam of light when it goes through any opening it it it, it has this formation of a ring now you can understand from this light source we had first opening here an aperture a lens is there so there must be a formation of airy ring here then after reflection it goes through another lens here there will be another set of apertures i have not drawn here okay you can draw here a set of apertures okay again it is going through an opening okay again there will be formation of airy ring okay you come to the eyepiece again there will be some aperture here also okay again there is an opening again that so this particular source has undergone this kind of airy ring formation at three places okay and with each place the beam is dividing into multiple beams okay and why it will bring down the resolution okay we will just see in this next slide okay that uh, there are these two uh, two sources okay two sources means there are two features which are emitting a, a light a, a light rays okay so how close we can see them to a separate okay so just you see this animation that i am bringing these two sources close to each other and how much closer i can bring them together that is what we want to see okay so this is what is the animation okay so you can see that my this bright spot is almost coinciding this with this bright spot here okay if i bring any for any closer than this particular position then i will start looking it as a one single entity okay and at this position what is happening is the maxima of this particular feature or spot is coinciding with the minima of this particular spot okay and that is what is plotted here in terms of intensity okay for first one this is what is the maxima okay for the second beam this is the maxima and it minima of that is inter is coinciding with the maxima of the first one similarly here the maxima of the second one is coinciding with the minima of the first one so this is the closest i can bring them together if i go any further than that okay then i won't be able to see these two features as separate entities okay and that is my minimum distance given by d1 by 2 d1 is your diameter of this particular central spot okay so this is equal to d1 by 2 okay and that is what we are saying is my resolution limit or r1 okay and which is given in terms of wavelength of light or and uh, i'll write down what do we mean by all this uh, parameters here in this particular equation okay so uh, uh, lambda is wavelength of the light we are using okay mu is refractive index of of the 
lens material and alpha is the half aperture angle ok. I will just show a schematic for that also to show you what do we mean by that ok. So, this is my optic axis and this is my lens ok. So, the and suppose this is my aperture ok. So, a light beam going like this just uh, next to the aperture what is the maximum angle it can make ok half of that. So, alpha will be this angle half aperture angle here ok. So, this is uh, my resolution can be expressed in terms of the wavelength which you use for a particular microscope. What is the refractive index of the lens ok and what is your half aperture angle. Okay. Refractive index of the lens you can also understand okay, if you wear uh, these glasses or some of your friend wear glasses. Okay. So, when they go to uh, any optical shop uh, okay, and ask uh, to make a new uh, glasses for him, okay, he will ask that you want a normal kind of lenses or you want this high refractive index lenses okay. and what they do is when you have this high refractive index lenses your if you if your friends power is very high for example, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5 then the thickness of the lens is going to be very high if you are not using a high refractive index glasses. But nowadays uh, what we get in the market these are all high refractive index glasses of course, made of uh, polymers. Okay, and what they do is they bring down the thickness of the lens. So, same power you can get with a very thin lens okay. and that is what is here also that I can use a high refractive index material okay, to have better uh, resolution. Okay. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, the resolution will be given by this okay, and mu sin alpha which is give, shown here is also called as numerical aperture of the uh, that particular lens ok. So, this criteria is was given by Ray, Ray, Lord Rayleigh and that is why it is called Ray, Ray, Rayleigh criterion ok and it is explained in the statement here that what do we mean by that and that defines my resolution. So, now you can understand that when my light goes to, through different apertures and in each aperture there is going to be formation of this airy ring and these airy rings from different features are going to interact with each other ok. So, it will going to reduce the clarity of the uh, image ok and I would not be able to see my all the features very clearly ok because all these airy rings will interact with each other with each other and bring down the clarity of the image ok. Now, to get best resolution ok, how I can improve resolution of a microscope ok, what I have to do is I have to bring down my lambda as you can see uh, my objective is to reduce R 1 ok. So, R 1 I can reduce if I bring the wavelength of the uh, light I am using or any electromagnetic radiation you can say because in electron microscope ok we use electrons to do that and the wavelength there is very small ok. So, my resolution is very high in case of electron microscope. In optical microscope we are have to use visible light only ok and uh, for example, we can use a green light which has a 400 nanometer wavelength ok. I can uh, again increase the resolution or reduce the R 1 ok by increasing the angle alpha ok. So, I can open up the aperture ok to get maximum resolution or I can use a higher index glass or uh, glass material ok. So, that will also uh, will have uh, better will give you better resolution ok. So, you can have sin alpha almost approaching 1 by using as large, uh, large an aperture possible mu maximum now uh, I think what type of material we have in optical microscope gives mu of 1.7 ok. So, these are all high refractive index medium that you can use ok. Just, uh, just for your information resolution of a human eye is only 0.2 mm ok. So, this you can keep in mind 
uh, and you can use this uh, value to find out that what can be the maximum useful magnification which you can have okay if your resolution is given by all these numbers if you just just put all numbers like 400 nanometer here sin alpha approaching almost 1 mu 1.7 and see how much is the resolution okay and that resolution has to uh, be a, a kind of uh, you the final resolution of your human eye is 0.2 and this is your uh, resolution you which you can get from the microscope so the, diff the their uh, ratio will give you the magnification okay now after knowing the resolution there are some uh, two more uh, terms which can be of interest to any microscopist is what is the depth of field okay so let me again draw a schematic here to show you what do we mean by depth of field so this is my objective lens okay and uh, of course this is my optic axis and my rays are coming like this from here they are intersecting at uh, the focus there okay so uh, from there i can tell you that this is my optimum focal distance or optimum focus i will get or best image i will get if i have uh, object here okay so this is where i will have optimum focus okay or optimum image now uh, we have just seen that uh, i i am going to have some resolution possible means i i can bring two objects closer up to a distance of d1 and still i will be able to see them as two separate entities okay so from optimum focus if i go up to any distance which is d here okay i should be able to not see any difference between the image okay so if i my image plane or my object plane varies between these two limits i won't be see able to see any difference in the image because it is still in the my resolution limit okay and that distance i am giving by h okay so that is what is shown here which is given by here 1.22 lambda upon mu sin alpha and tan alpha okay so that is my depth of field of course it is depend dependent on alpha here as you can see okay so if i have a smaller aperture i will have better depth of field we can do calculations based on this in assignment then you will be able to understand it better that if i reduce the alpha okay uh, uh, then i will have a better resolution or uh, better depth of field as you can see uh, if i reduce alpha sin alpha and tan, tan alpha both values will be lower okay so the h will be higher okay so if i reduce the apertures okay angle then my depth of field will be higher but if you remember what we discussed in the resolution my resolution will be poor my depth of field will be higher my resolution will be poor i don't know if 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 you have used uh, this slr cameras or maybe some of your friends have this slr camera okay you use this idea of aperture to increase or decrease the depth of field okay suppose uh, this you cannot do in a no normal uh, my uh, normal cameras but slr camera you because you do manual adjustment so if you reduce the aperture okay if you have slr camera if your friend has a SN have an slr camera you can ask him that what you do okay so if you want to have image such that uh, i uh, i am also in the focus and something which is in front of me maybe uh, let's say 10 meters in front of me that guy is also in focus what he will do he will reduce the aperture Ma means he will reduce this angle alpha and then both the subject will be in focus but he wants to have a kind of uh, bring the artistry into this thing sometime you see these images where a flower is in the front and you want to take a photograph of somebody who is behind that and you want to keep this out of focus and bring that subject into focus then you increase the aperture okay now you can focus only at one point either this flower or you can uh, have 
that subject in focus. Okay. So, this aperture actually you play with in SLR camera to change the depth of field and that is what is here. Okay. Your depth of field will change if I change the aperture angle okay. and you can play with that. Of course, in optical microscope the depth of field is very small okay. and that is why you will understand that why we have to do polishing when we go to uh, next lectures that why we do polishing because in optical microscope the depth of field is very small okay. And from that another concept which comes is called depth of focus okay. The depth of focus is basically f as depth of field is for the objective lens the depth of focus is for the eyepiece okay. And you can see that it is magnification square of magnification times the depth of field. So, it is very high. So, if this is in micron and suppose I am using a magnification of let us say 100. So, it is 100 into 100 uh, one, uh, 10,000 times of the depth of field of micron length. Okay. So, it will be something in mm or maybe centimeter. Okay. So, depth of focus means see when you see all this optical that this is my object, this is my lens and some image is forming at this point. From this we understand that I have to be exactly at this position to see the image because this is where the image is forming. If I go anywhere uh, in this side or on this side I should not be able to see the image. Okay. It defines a very clear plane on which the image is forming. Okay. So, for a uh, person if he suppose he is seeing a, an image in a microscope he has to be all the time at this particular location to see the image. Okay, and that is a uh, you are putting a great restriction on him just to have at every point. Uh, suppose he is watching that image for 10 minutes, for 10 minutes he has to be at that particular uh, position okay, to watch this the, the image. Okay, but that is not true. Actually, you have a leeway here that you can vary between these two and still you will be able to see the image because you have some depth of focus here and which is some uh, order of magnitude times the depth of field. Okay. So, it gives you some relaxation that I can be little bit changing my position and I still will be able to see the image. Okay. So, that is what is depth of focus. Okay. So, with this uh, I think we have covered all our uh, terms which are related to microscope. Okay. So, thank you here. Uh, we will now see the uh, uh, how we actually prepare sample for looking at the microstructure and uh, that is what we uh, call as metallography. Thank you.